walk up to a fence and it opens by itself and I'm being escorted or ushered to a warehouse, some kind of building. It's a pretty big building, a creepy door, a large creepy door in front of it. And then also the door opens. I walk inside and it's huge inside of this building, like endless, no matter which direction I look. And there, as I'm being escorted, now I'm being escorted by something. I can't see his face. And uh, I don't remember uh, what exactly the escort looked like, but I do remember being escorted around this building. And as I go to room to room, there's a bunch of rooms in it, you know, and as I go through room to room, there are people there and you can hear the wailing and it's hot. It's very hot. And it's wailing and moaning all throughout the building. You can sense the despair all inside of this building. And there's a bunch of rooms and I'm getting toured, escorted through uh, as, as like a tour guide through room to room. And as I go in each room, there are different sets of people with different sets of problems, wailing and moaning in, in pain and agony. And finally, I get to this one room in particular. And there it's like a stage and outside of the stage is like an audience of people watching as if you were going to the movies or a theater and I've been escorted on top of the stage where the quote unquote actors are or the people are and on top of the stage I can see people committed all kinds of sins and all kinds of atrocities such as murder, rape, uh, theft, molestation and as they do these things, these horrible acts, I can feel the despair as they do them as if they want to stop. They are totally aware how God feels about these acts. Yet, even though they want to stop doing these acts, they continue to do these acts. They continue to molest the children. They continue to rape the women. They continue to steal over and over and over again in an endless cycle. No sooner than they finish, they start over again doing the same thing. And there's a crowd of people just sitting there watching them commit these atrocities. And inside of these people, it's as if I could feel their pain, wanted to stop, wanted to know that God is unpleased with them. But nevertheless, this is the life that they are stuck in in a continuous loop. So as I leave this room, also, I remember asking questions to the tour guide about the place that I'm in. And I um, asked the tour guide basically, why you know, am I here? Why, why am I there? And the tour guide looks around the place and he looks at me and again, I'm unable to recall the face of the tour guide, but um, it, it comes to me uh, that this is what is going to happen to those who reject the word of God, who reject the salvation through Jesus Christ. Uh, this is what's going to happen to those who do not uh, accept the gospel message and the truth of Jesus Christ. And so I'm still wondering why I'm here, why, you know, why I'm here, why, you know, uh, is this being shown to me? You know, there's only two, you know, outcomes of this. Is this a wanted to me or where I'm going? Or is this something I'm supposed to warn others about? But uh, I can't remember much of the dream. I do remember much longer than that. It was uh, many more uh, rooms with the uh, crust of the dream is pretty much that. And then in the midst of this dream, same dream, I didn't wake up like out of my sleep, but it like rebooted and reset it. And this time I am the one inside of the gate. And as I'm standing there you know, inside of the gate, I see people walk up and these people who are walking up, they have like non uniforms on, non suits on, but their faces in my mind, they were faces of demons. But looking back on it, there may be faces of those, you know, that were severely burnt or something like that. But you could tell they had noses and eyes and stuff, but their faces were uh, severely uh, mutilated and severely uh, changed. And so 
you know, again, my first thought, you know, when I was dreaming the dream, I thought a bunch of demons and non clothes was coming up to the gate. And now I open the gate. And so as I open the gate, you know, I let them in and they follow me and I'm the tour guide and I'm taking them through the same warehouse, the same building, through the same room and the same pain and willing and, and torment is going on in these rooms. And they're asking me, they're talking to me, so they show us the book, show us the book of righteousness, show us the book of truth. And so I oblige and I nod my head and say, okay, and I'm taking them, I'm taking them through this place. And finally I get to this one room. And this big door is there. It's like this huge door. And I, I pull on the door and I open it. And they follow me in. And then there's this one stand in the middle of the room, like a, a podium. And on top of that podium is a big book. And I walk up to the book. And there's six words on it. Excuse me, six letters on it. And the six letters I do remember. Um, and I want to do some investigation of the six letters. It didn't say Bible. Okay. It, it didn't say Bible. All right. On, on this On this book. This book of truth, this book of righteousness, you know, it says something else. And again, maybe one day I'll do a video on what the book said, what the words, what the letters were. But I, I'm thinking that these uh, uh, words, uh, these letters um, stand for something. And uh, again, I want to find out what that is. But anyway, uh, so they all gathered around the book. And then when I uh, touched the book, to open the pages, uh, you know, when I touched the book, not I can't even say I was there to open the pages or anything. When I touched the book, that's when uh, the dream ended, and uh, I woke up. Now, <clears throat> this strange and, and weird dream um, can have uh, many interpretations. But what happened was, as I pondered this dream and did some research on the words, the six uh, letters that were on top of this book, uh, I. Uh, but very disturbed by this and what happened was maybe a week later uh, I did uh, another prayer to God and I uh, bowed and um, asked for interpretation uh, of this dream and uh, what I got was that very same night when I uh, went to sleep uh, pretty much a uh, answer to my prayer and what, it, uh, what the answer was concerning this dream was pretty much <clears throat> Taking two parts. Now, the first part I kind of got uh, immediately, and that was the fact that I was being toured around here. What was my goal? Now, I noticed that I was never a participant in none of this stuff. I was a uh, onlooker. I was a, 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 a tour guide. I was uh, somebody who was being shown around the place. And it was like these people, they were in certain uh, wardrobe, certain dress, and I was in a different type of dress. And so, uh, again, I said I was very disturbed because of one of two co conclusions. God's telling me I'm unsaved. <laughs> this is where I'm headed. Or God's telling me to warn people about this. Well, it was quite um, plain to me that what God was trying to show me is I needed to warn people about that, that I was not part of this group. But this group does exist. And a lot of people who think they are not part of this group need to be warned that they're that. In fact, yes, you are part of this group. You're part of the broad road and not the narrow one. And this is a place you need to be warned about. Now, <clears throat> the second part of the dream, which was very confusing about the nuns came and I uh, say the demons coming in nuns clothes uh, to this, this place and asking to see the book, asking to see the truth, asking to see this. Uh, that's the part that I really needed some insight on when I prayed. And that's the part that I think I did get insight on. I think that are a bunch of religious people, but these religious people, that came to this place were controlled by demons, were deceived by demons, deceived by lies, deceived by quote unquote angels of light. Okay. And it's because they were dressed in, again, this non clothes and they were religious people, people that believe in themselves to be saved. They came to this place and with full realization that they, uh, I guess, deserved to be there because no one was fighting the fact that they were there. What they wanted to do at this point was, wow, I want to see the truth. I want to see the true words. I want to see uh, God's thoughts, God's uh, brain, God's, uh, you know, the, 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 the words of truth, the words of life, you know. And so I take, took them to the place and I took them to uh, the place where the words were, where the book was. And uh, again, that's when I woke up, when I got at them there. Now, uh, <clears throat> I'll take that 
to me, my job here, you know, I said, I already said the first part was to warn people. And I take that as my job here is to guide people to the words of truth, the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge, to guide people here, to guide religious people. Now, the Bible talks about a field and how there are a bunch of, uh, it's very few workers, but it's a bunch of uh, crops and things to be gathered. It's a bunch of people to be gathered and, and processed as, as believers. We're supposed to go out there into the fields and do our best to make believers, make disciples of, of everyone, you know, to gather those to Christ, to do a lot of gathering. And there's a lot of people just telling people all these pipe dreams, pie in the sky, these uh, prosperity preachers, these uh, demons, these, again, wolves and sheep's clothing out there. Our job is to warn. The Bible is very clear. Our job, and I think God is trying to tell me in my ministry, I need to do a better job of warning people. Uh, it's good to teach people about uh, what the Bible says about uh, Adam and Eve, and it's good to teach people about the the, the ark and uh, about Paul and, and Silas and, and these people existed and what they did. But the very crux of a preacher, the very crux of the gospel message is to tell man that he's a sinner and need of a savior. And we talk about Jesus Christ a lot on this channel, but we need to tell people that they are a sinner and need of a savior, which again, I do that, but maybe not as much as I need to. And let them know that everything that says Jesus, everything that says church, everything that says religion is not so. Satan has uh, did an excellent job of disguising himself, disguising his workers as angels of light, disguising these uh these buildings and, and billboards and these denominations as, as, as angels of light. But a lot of these places are just places of Satan, places to deceive and keep people away from the real truth, the real Christ, the real religion, the real book of righteousness, the real uh, relationship that God wants, wants us to have. And while people are stuck there, uh, they're going to one day die and go to a place where they don't want to go. Matthew talks about this in de detail and in depth in Matthew chapter 7 when it says many will say to me in that day that's the day of, uh, that they wake up and realize you know that there is time to be judged and many are going to say the Lord Lord you know and it, so these are religious folk they say Lord and they say how about we worship you you know have have we did many wonderful works in your name and he says I'm going to say to you depart from me ye that work in iniquity in other words you never was one of mine you never was a disciple. That is the crux of what we here at this ministry, I at this ministry, and, and we as true uh, ministers, that's what we need to be doing. And I think that video, uh, and I believe that dream was to keep me and others like me in check. Now, I'm going to read some scripture because this is scripture versus scripture. And everything we say or do is based on the word of God. And it, I'm going to prove the point when I say that a prophet's job has always been to warn, not to puff people up, not to say how great you are, you know, not to say that you make mistakes and not tell people about their sins, not to tell people about how much money they can make in investments. Not to, no, your soul is worth much more than money. You can make all the money in the world. What should a prophet man, if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That's not the purpose of us. The purpose of a true man of God is to tell people out there to repent and turn back to God from their wicked ways. If you're not doing that, you're not a true man of God. We are going to do that at this uh, channel. I'm going to do it specifically on this channel. And anybody else who is part of this family, the scripture versus scripture family, need to be doing it to others. There are other brothers and sisters out there. It's not the pastor's job. It's collectively the church's job. If you are part of the body of Christ, you are part of the church. It's your job to warn others about the impending doom about to happen. Now, <clears throat> when we look at Jonah chapter one, verse one, we see these words. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amadi, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for that wickedness has come up before me. All right. You see that? It says, Go to Nineveh and what? Cry against it. No, he was telling Nineveh how great they were. That was Jonah was saying. No. He was telling, uh, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh and tell them how to uh, increase their crops and increase their profits. No. No. Uh, Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh and tell them uh, how to uh, live, a, live a long life or live their best life. No. No. no, Jonah was going to Nineveh to cry against it. 
all right? For their wickedness is coming before me. He said, tell them about their wickedness. Tell them to repent, okay? That's what Jonah was supposed to do. Ezekiel chapter three, verse 17. Son of man, I made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Okay, Ezekiel, you're a watchman. Look after them. Look after my people. Look after my house. Watch over them, all right? You need to be a watchman and you need to tell them what they need to do when they are in danger, all right? So, therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them what? Warning for me. Warn them. When you see they have departed off the path, when they have failed to follow me after me and, and, and departed from me, warn them about it. Tell them to what? Repent. Come back. Repent means to turn around, turn back to God and away from everything else. The prophet's job, the man of God's job has always been the same, to warn people and tell them to repent. Not this foolishness that you see today all around, trying to help people uh, be uh, wealthy and trying to help people be uh, uh, get promotions and try to help people. None of that stuff matters in the sight of God if your soul is destined for doom, for despair, destruction. None of that stuff matters. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go back and before I finish the rest of these uh, scriptures, it's really, I think, one more that's what I want to read uh, and say a part of that dream that really uh, caught my eye. Okay. And that's the part where I said, there were people on this stage performing these evil acts that they did in their life now in their afterlife over and over again. But this time unable to stop. It kind of reminded me of King Midas, who had this uh, desire to be rich, strangely enough. And that was prosperity. Preachers talk about money, 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 money. So everything he touched, he wanted to turn to gold. So he, he got this, uh, you know, he prayed for this. I should say prayed. He asked for this ability uh, to for everything he did touch to turn to gold. And it was granted to him. So he was running around the palace, touching things, touching this, touching that, touching that. But, all right. Happy as he can be. And eventually his loved ones came in. All right. He started to touch them. Couldn't hug his wife. Well, he didn't think about it. Hug, you know, touched her. She turned to gold. His kids, a son, a daughter, whatever. You know, couldn't touch them. They turned to gold. But so it comes to the point that such a, a thing that he thought was a blessing and was good actually turned out to be a curse. And he, you know, was trapped in a position for whatever he could touch, turned to gold. Therefore, he could never touch his friends, family, loved ones again, or, or things like that, a whole things without turning it into gold. Right now, with that being said, I think that the dream uh, warns that, OK, you love this sin so much. One day it's going to be a, to the point where, you know, <laughs> you can't stop sinning. Now, the Bible has scripture in Revelation, and it says, you know, it talks about the judgment and afterlife. And it says, he that is righteous shall be righteous still. And he that is wicked is going to be wicked still. Basically, you're going to be trapped. In whatever state that God has pronounced you in, you're going to be trapped in that state, forever trapped in that state, and forever judged or looked at in that state. If you want to hear it, forever righteous through the blood of Jesus, not your own acts or works. And if you're not one of his, you are forever wicked in God's sight. And I think these people were trapped in a state where they were forever wicked and forever judged for their wickedness. Now, <clears throat> last thing, but we need to warn people about this. Warn people about the dangers of rejecting Christ as their Messiah. Second Kings 17, verse 13. Back to my point on our job as men of God is to warn others about the impending danger and doom of wickedness or not accepting the gospel. Of Jesus Christ is this Second Kings seventeen thirteen. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets. How did God testify? How did He warn His people? Now Israel and Judah is representing God's chosen people. He said, "Well, when God wanted to testify against them, tell them about themselves. Tell them to straighten up. Tell them what you need to do, or tell them what you're doing wrong." What did He do? He sent the prophets and the seers. And what did they say to them? Oh, you okay? God don't care about your sin. Oh, you're okay. Uh, what God wants you to do is to, to make money and prosper and get more gold. What God wants you to do is conquer more territories. What God wants you to do is advance yourself. No, in your wickedness. No, that's not what he said. What they said is, again, yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets, that's how, by the men of God and by all the seers, saying, and this is their message, turn ye away, excuse me, turn from your evil ways. And keep my commandments in my statutes. 
What do we call that? Repentance. He said, repent, repent, all right? Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my service, the prophets. Again, how? Now we got men of God here that's not doing their job. They're not warning people. They're doing everything but warning people. They send them McDonald's, Burger Kings, and, 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 and donuts shops and stores and everything else in these churches, making them a, a house of merchandise, not a house of prayer. That's another story. We got people up there telling people how to live their best life now. We in reality, this could never be your best life if you are a child of God because you have a life in the hereafter that's going to be way better than this one. Now, it is true. You will live your best life now if you're not a child of God. Because if you're not a child of God, you've got hell to look forward to. You've got a place of torment and pain to look forward to. So this will be your best life. Absolutely. So in a way, that person that's telling you to do this, he's absolutely right. You can live your best life now if you follow his doctrine, if you follow his teachings and whatever. You need to get out of there. You need to follow a preacher. Now, uh, a lot of people don't want to follow a preacher that tell them to repent, tell them about their sins, tell them what's right, tell them about holiness. All right. <laughs> we got a preacher who's ruthless. On 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 uh, YouTube about holiness. I mean, I'll, he he'll hammer that thing home. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's better to warn people and hammer the point home about living holy than to do the opposite and telling them it's okay to do what you're doing and God gonna bless you anyhow because that's not the truth. All right. Let's finish this scripture. All right. Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which. I sent to you by my servants, the prophets, notwithstanding they would not hear, but harden their necks. Notwithstanding right now, God does have a contingency of people, a contingency of men who are telling you the truth, that are telling you what thus said the Lord, that are telling you everything you need to repent, turn back to him. But we have a whole bunch of people who are stiffing their necks, are hardening their hearts and refuse to listen to them. Why? They rather listen to the hooker crooks, the false preachers, those that uh, masquerade themselves as angels of light and telling them all the other candy, cotton candy coated lies instead of the hardened truth that's going to set you free. The Bible says, and you shall know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Lies will keep you in bondage. Lies will keep you in bondage. Now, <clears throat> when we look at the New Testament, I read Old Testament scriptures here. When we look at the New Testament, we'll see that two of the most prominent uh, preachers and messengers of God had the same message, the same message that the Old Testament prophets had. And that message is to repent. I'm going to say it again. That message is to repent. We look at, at Matthew. All right. In chapter three and chapter four, we see John the Baptist. We see Jesus Christ coming back to back, saying the same thing. Repent for the kingdom of, of heaven is at hand same message you see john the baptist repent for the kingdom message for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and jesus repent same thing for the kingdom of heaven is at hand why it is of utmost importance that no matter what we preach about how to uh heal broken hearts and how to give money and how to love one another how to be charitable and how to be forgiven it is of utmost importance no matter what we preach or teach the main thing we need to do is tell people to repent, turn around from their wicked ways, turn back to the living God. Because if we don't teach people to do that and teach that man is a sinner in need of a savior, that savior being Jesus Christ, the things that I dreamed about and much worse will be a future reality for them. If you do love your brother and the Bible commands us to be our brother keeper, let's keep them from a place worse than death and hope. That lesson has been a blessing to you. That is my take on my terrible nightmare dream. Amen.